Okay, so now that we are done, we want to create the death script. The death script is going to be based on or placed on the traps, so the static traps, the moving traps, even the full traps. All of them are going to have the same exact, same exact script. So let's go back to our Visual Studio Code and let's choose the death trigger script. Now in the death trigger script, we are first going to get the audio shader or we're going to create a serialized field to get the, uh, the uh, trap sound. So I'm going to say serialized field, the local trap sound is going to be an audio shader again and nil by default and another serialized field because we are going to be using this script for a lot of objects or a lot of traps. We are going to set a serialized field. I'm going to call it moving and it's going to be a boolean and it's going to be false by default. So we call false by default. If it's not moving, we don't play the animation. And if it's moving, we play the animation. We will talk about this in a bit. And then the, if it's moving, we are going to have a duration, of course. So the duration is also going to be a number. And I'm going to set the 2-2 two two by default. And the serialized field, the last one, is going to be the point B, which is where is the object moving to. If that makes sense. So point B is going to be a transform and it's going to be nil by default and we also will be going to require the player tracker script so player tracker equal player tracker and i love to have upper cases okay perfect and now again function since this is a client and server script we're gonna say function self client awake and we're gonna close it now this is going to be the same way we are going to listen to the on trigger enter so function self on trigger enter trigger enter which also takes the other and the collider and we're gonna check for the player so local player character character equal other dot game object dot get component or i mean the method get component not property character and if player character equal nil then turn and same thing and then local player equal player character dot player and if client local player equal the player and again if you want to make it look the same i know this is just repeating itself but that's exactly how it should be and now here here's what we need so basically when when the player hit that collider i mean i explained this so many times i'm not going to explain it again but when the player is equal to the client player you gotta play the audio for the trap so audio play shader and the trap sound and then we are also going to call the player tracker uh module and we're gonna respond the player because if I go here to the player tracker and I scroll down, we have a respond player, right? We're gonna be using that function to respond the player whenever they hit an obstacle or a trap. But whenever we call the respond player, it's basically getting the player information from the player's table and it's also getting the stage of the player, right? And then if the stage is zero, it's responding the player by sending an event, respond event to the server and it's gonna say spawn and the same goes for the uh, respond request. Does that make sense? I think that makes right? sense. Okay. Now, here, since we are done with the on trigger enter, there's something that we're gonna we're gonna be adding. So now the traps that we have has animation, right? And to make the animation actually play, we have to use the is moving or moving variable that we declared earlier. So we're gonna say if moving, right? So if moving, then end, and here goes everything. The local from this is the point where it start, right? So the starting position is the cell dot transform dot position where the object is at right now and we're gonna say local to which is the destination of the position so this is how you define it so local to equal point b dot position because point b is a serialized field that we are later on going to assign to that specific model or object now since we have the from and to we are going to tween the position from the starting point to the destination and if you want to do that, you have to do self.transform tween, oops, okay, tween position from and to. But this method takes other method methods like a duration, it takes a ping pong, loop, and so many other things. So for this one, I'm going to use the duration, duration, and it's going to be the one that we set above in the serialized field, right? And the ping pong, basically, it makes the movement, <laughs> it makes the movement ping pong between the starting and the end position, if that makes sense. So ping pong and we're gonna say loop because when I keep it looping you can add a count if you want but I don't need to add an account and ease in out cubic ease in out quick apply an ease in out and then the play finally the play animation now that's done let's go back to our project now we are back in unity we are going to select the objects so I'm going to start with the box so the moving death trigger now this is something that you should really care about Whenever you are adding the script, be careful. When you add the script, you don't add it to 
to the entire object. You add it to the death trigger because the death trigger has the box collider. Does that make sense? So when you're adding the object, make sure you add the object to the death trigger and not the moving death trigger and not the cube. Okay, so I'm going to be adding it to the death trigger. So I'm going to be taking the traps and death trigger. I'm going to be putting right here and the trap sound is going to be the trap and the moving is going to be yes. Transform B is going to be the position B, which is this position right here, which is point B, right? I'm going to just set this to point B and it's going to be, should be this one, right? Okay, no, so it, just be, it should be this one. So drag and drop this one. Does that make sense? Now we go again to the an another death trigger and we're going to be putting the death trigger script inside. We're going to be selecting the trap sound. We're going to set it to moving and then we're going to drag and drop the point B into here. And again, the last one, going to select death trigger. We're going to be putting the script, select the audio, set it to true, moving and take the point B and set it right here. And we can change the duration however you want. Now that's done. We can close this up, close all of them. And that's done with the moving traps. Now for the static traps, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select the death trigger, right? And we're going to be putting it right here. And we're going to select the trap audio, right? But we're going to remove the, the moving. And we're also going to remove point B because we basically don't want it because we don't need it because it's not moving, right? I'm going to do this to every single one of them. I'm going to open up every single one of them and I'm going to be setting it right. And you can do it to all the prefabs if you want, but just if you are just a beginner, it's easier for you to just do it like that. It's not easier, but it's just more convenient for you. I'm going to be putting these here and just like that. Now there's only one more trap that we need, which is the green one. So I'm going to choose the moving traps and this is going to be a bit, actually not the moving default traps. Now this is going to be a bit confusing. Okay. Now here's something I really want you to pay attention to. Now there's something that you should do because this template right here has it in a different way and I'm going to be scripting it in, an, in a bit, a bit of better way, if that makes sense. So change the names of these, of the traps and order them. So we're going to start with the first one. So click on the first one, click on the full trap, right click, rename. I'm going to call it full trap underscore zero. And I'm also going to copy this name, right? So select all of the name, copy it and move to the next one. So select the next one, rename it. Instead of zero, do one. Does that make sense? Select each one of them and do three. And if you want to rename it faster, you can just select it and do F2 and then rename it. So we did one. We did zero, one, two, and now this is going to be three, right? And so on. Just do them, do it for every single one of them. So five and six, seven, and we still have a bunch here. So be eight, eight, and this should be nine, ten, and eleven. Now you can reorder them in the hierarchy. So you can move the full trap here, move each one of them up. Now we have, okay, that should be two, four, five, six. Okay, since we have them all under each other and just gonna select them all eight nine ten okay perfect so now we have them in order now there's something here that you should see the full trap is made of uh made of two traps or two objects so if i select it you can see here it's one object but it's not if i open or expand you can see here there's something called trap box and a save box now the trap box is the actual trap which is the trap that you walk on, right? So this is the trap that you're walking on. But the save box is the is the box that you are basically walking on. So the save box is this. And then there's the hidden trap box, which is this. So whenever you walk, it will basically you will basically walk on this, which has the box collider. And that's where our script should be. So the trap box should have the death trigger. Does that make sense? Trap box is the trap that you walk on. But the save box is the safe box that you can walk on. So this should not have the death trigger. Instead, the trap box should have the death trigger. So I'm going to be putting it right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So now that the trap box has the trigger or the script, I mean, sorry. So we're going to be putting the trap into the sound. Perfect. Now we're going to do it for each one of them. And just to quickly look at this, let me see if there is a way to 
actually apply this to every single one of them. Does that make sense? Not sure. That will apply it to each. Yeah. So that will apply it to every single one of them. Okay, perfect. Okay, so basically when you put the script on the on the uh, on the model itself or the object itself and it's if it's if uh if it's a prefab you basically click on the override and if you see the script here just hit apply and this will apply it to every single one so look here i have it on every single one of them i should have <laughs> i should have showed you how it's done because i don't think i can revert the changes right now but you got the point right so basically each one of them should have the death trigger script and everything should be turned off with the uh basically the audio Right, so that's done. Now, one more script left for us to do, which is going to be the full trap scripts, the, the thing that actually make them move. So let's start with that. Okay, so now that we are done with the death trigger script, we go to the full trap script. And in the full trap script, we are going to have uh, a few different uh, serialized fields, several different, different serialized fields. Remember when we talked about the trap box and the save box, we're gonna have a serialized field for each one of them. So serialized field, Local trap box, right? Equal is going to be um, a game object and it's going to be nil equal to nil. And the same goes for the save box. So save box going to be a game object and it's going to be nil. So we can assign it later, right? But here we're going to have one extra. Actually, let me just push this down to make it look clean for you. And we say local interval, interval time, going to be a number, it's going to be two. So this is going to be the time between each trap that like between the movement of each trap. Okay. okay let's say local current state going to st okay state is going to be false that it's not moving and local trap name equal nil. We'll get back to this later. And let's listen to the function which is the client start. Make sure that you're using client start and not just client awake or just awake because we're using client on server and we want the start because that's when the start the script starts and not when it's first initialized. Okay. Now we are also going to have trap count. How many how many traps do we have? We have eleven. And local offset interval. Now this is the offset between each trap. It's gonna be zero point five. And local offset timer. Did I type that right? Yeah. Let me just offset timer. Yep. Yeah. Going to be a number, and it's going to be zero. Now we're gonna say local mapping, and this is I will explain this a bit because it's gonna be a bit confusing. So what I'm going to do right now, instead of having a serialized field for every single trap. We are going to create an empty object, right? And this is exactly why we changed the name. We have to create an empty object and that object, I mean table, that table will store all the traps that we have. How many traps do we have? 11. So we're going to loop through them all by doing for i equals zero, trap count do. So the i is going to eep, so for the i is equal to zero, how many traps do we have? 11, right? We're going to do local trap index equal to string one, meaning every time we hit a trap or we not hit a trap. I mean, every time we reach a trap, it's going to add one to that trap. Then we're going to say local offset equal I times offset interval. And then we're going to say mapping. And then we're going to give it the name. Now this is going to be the key for each one of them. So the key is going to be the name of the traps. We said all trap underscore and then two dots and then the trap index equal offset timer equal offset. This might be confusing. I'll explain in a second. So what we basically do is set a trap count, which is 11, set an offset interval, which is the time between each trap because they're going to be moving like a worm. So there's an offset interval, which is 0 0.5, and there's an offset set timer, right? That's going to be zero. Now we create an empty table to map all the traps that we have. And then for i equals zero, we get the trap counts. So this will run 11 times. We get the trap index by doing two string one, which will output, if I say output, will output one like that, and then two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, two, reach 11, right? And output, okay. And the offset is going to be multiplied by one every time. So for example, one times 0 0.5 then two times 0 0.5, three times 0 0.5, and so on. So this will always give us this consistent speed. And then the mapping, we insert a new value to the mapping by doing whole trap underscore, and then the name. So the output would be something like whole trap underscore zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and so on, right? 
and then it's going to be equal to the offset timer which is the offset that we just multiplied earlier now when the clients start first since this script is going to be attached to different traps we're going to set the name of the trap using the trap name variable that we declared earlier so trap name or a trap name equals self to game object dot name and then function we're gonna make a we're gonna make a few functions the first function is going to be the toggle trap we're gonna take an argument which is enable or disable the state so whether it's false or true it's gonna be a state now this function will set the save box to active tech set active not state okay so set active takes to takes one but one one parameter but it's two different conditions it's false all true it's a boolean so if it's not state it will return true and if it's state it will return false does that make sense so the output could be false or true same goes for the trap box the trap box that active state and the current state will be the state that we just put right here right the function start trap cycle start moving the traps we're gonna say toggle trap and it's gonna be true because when you first when you first start the trap cycle it has to be true set to true and then we're gonna say timer dot every which takes the interval and the callback the interval the interval timer and then a function that toggles the trap and says not current state i'll explain this in a bit so basically this function will call the other function that we created the toggle trap and will set it to true so the save box will be set to true if it's false and will the trap box will be set to true now the current state will override the state by the state that we gave it right here which is this one right here it will override it here so we use the timer to keep repeating it every interval timer which is every two seconds we toggle traps to not the current state so if the current state is false it's going to be set to true and the opposite if it's set to true it's going to be set to false now we're going to say local offset timer equal mapping and the name of the trap because that's exactly what i said you have to rename the traps since we saved them using the name of the trap with the number we have to get it and we assigned the name already we can get it by doing mapping trap name it's similar to the way we were doing it with the players in the players tracker if you remember but offset timer since the offset timer is a is a value or yeah it's a value inside the uh, inside the tra the in the mapping table now timer is after again we're gonna say t every offset timer we're going to start the trap cycle that's it for just a quick note um I messed up the two string. Two string should not be one. It was one here. Just make sure you put i. So trap index two string and i and not one. Okay. So two string, i, and that's it. Okay. Back to Unity. We are going to assign the script to all the traps. So select the traps, right? And actually, this is a good way to show you the the way you can apply the prefab. So we have a full trap script, right? We're gonna put it on here, right? So since we put this on this uh object we can go to the overrides and we can apply it to all of them okay so go to override and apply to all and this will apply the script as you can see it uh, literally applied to all the um calling traps that we have all we need to do now is basically assign the trap box and the save box so for each one i'm going to expand and i'm going to move the trap box and put it here and move the save box and put it here now be careful do not apply this to everyone every single one because it will not be applied each one should have its own right so we're gonna do it one by one so select full trap one move the drop box and move the save box same goes for every single one of them so drop box and save box do it for each one of them <laughs> i know it can be boring but i mean we made a template for you right so i'll be back once i finish them okay so now i finished all of them you have to make sure that you set every, each one with the trap box and the save box that it has so now that's done and one more thing that we need is the ui so now there's one more thing that i wanted to do um uh, before creating the ui i am going to make sure that ui is actually created for you when you first start using the template uh you should have a script here it says obstacle hud all you need to do is go to player tracker move the obstacle hud and put it right here checkpoint count you have to 
put the count here. How many do you have? So we have one, two, three, four, five, and just set them to five, right? So once you set them to five, that's all you need to do. And there's one tiny thing. If you go to the player tracker, and this is really important, so go to the player tracker, and let me move it here. And in the player tracker, in the client awake, when we change the the stage, you must call the update meter. So under the print, say my UI controller dot update meter, and this will take the new value. And that's it. Now if you go back to Unity, if you if you go to the player tracker, in the player tracker we have to put the checkpoints that we have. So we're gonna select the checkpoint, this one, so we've got to go to the player tracker and checkpoint one, move it here, checkpoint two, move it here, checkpoint three, move it here, checkpoint four, and so on. Now this will basically save the checkpoints that we have. So if we click play to test the game. And you can see here that everything is moving, everything is working. So you can see here the traps are moving in, in order. So if I stand on this one, you can hear the audio of the checkpoint. And if I die, for example, let me show you. If I die, you can see that we go back to the checkpoint that we just hit. And let's try to reach a different checkpoint. You can see here that it updated on two and it also print on two. And if I pass this, I go back to the checkpoint that I just got and so on. Now you can make this as hard as you want and until you reach the last one, you can mess around with the numbers of the, of the speed and you can do whatever you want.